Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Coach Derek Matthews, who is the head women's basketball coach for USAO, whose drovers are on a seven game winning streak. And that includes a big win at Southwestern Assemblies of God on Saturday, 80 to 52, the victory. Coach Matthews, uh, again, congratulations so far on the streak. It's a, it's a good time to be having a winning streak at this point of the season. And then a big victory at SAGU. Yeah, you know, it's uh, we're, we're playing well right now. You know, I'll tell you what, when you lose earlier games, everyone just kind of just crumbles you up and just throw you in the trash <laughs> a little bit. But I like I've been saying, I, I'm OK with, you know, losing in November as long as we got it figured out when you hit that January mark. And 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 we have that, you know, the the losses that we had earlier on, especially we had a back to back loss against um, Texas uh, Westland. And then we end up losing to Langston. and um, when you're winning, you don't change anything because you don't really need to. You, there may be someone in a lineup you want to pull to make a change or you, you want to maybe implement some plays or so, but there's no reason to. So when you lose, I'll tell you what, it made us go to the drawing board and say, all right, let's change this and change this. And it just happened to work and and it and it proved it when we played Wayland. So. Well, the Trovers are 16 and four now, 10 and three in the Sooner Athletic Conference and always a challenging conference in NAI basketball, no doubt about that. Coach, you got good play the other night again. Southwestern Assembly is God, tough place to win down there in Waxahachie as well. Milagros Carrera, 18 points, six rebounds, three assists in that game, and she's doing pretty well. And and one other thing, too, is you, you talk about her. You're about to get another chance to talk about her, too, because on Thursday night she has a, a chance to top the 1,000-point plateau for her career. She's at 998 right now. Yeah, she's a she's a special player. Um, she's someone where she could have gotten her thousand points in Sagu. Don't let her fool you. Like she <laughs> she probably started passing a little bit more than what she should have. But um, but no, she's a special player. Um, you know, coaches have to be visionaries, right? We have to look at things and and see their film and see them in person and say, all right, this is what I think that they can be if they come in here. And I will say that she's she's become the player that I thought she was going to be coming in. Um, and, and she does so many different things on the court, off the court. Like she's she's really a joy to be around. I mean, I, I truly enjoy and just love that girl um, because she she just does everything right. And she gives extra effort in the gym. She's a great teammate. People like playing with her. And, and she's just a very humble person. So. Um, but yeah, she's been playing extremely well. Like I, I'm, I've been thoroughly impressed by her play. I think with her, um, I think she was third team last year for the sack. I think she really wants to prove to them that like, Hey, I am a top player. And, and she most definitely came out this year with that mentality. So. Well, it looks like she's doing her part for that too. And you know, coach, even if she did maybe back off a little bit to be able to get that thousand points at home. That, that may be a little bit nicer anyway. I, that, that's that's something that I'm sure the crowd will enjoy in getting to celebrate that. She's a junior for you, not alone. Another junior in Zaria Dorsey, who's been playing well, also an All-American uh, last season, uh, SAC Newcomer of the Year as well. And, and she put up 16 points and five boards for you also in that win over Southwestern Assemblies of God. So last year with Zaria and we call her Millie, they – there was times where I thought that we we're just trying to get it figured out. Z, you need Millie in order to be great. And Millie, you need Z in order to be great. <laughs> um, and this year, it's just, I don't know what it was. It was definitely nothing I did. It's just, it just snapped. They finally realized that, hey, we can play with each other. They can't double me if you're doing your job. And then Millie, you're able to do your job if Z's doing her job. So it's been great. Um, there, we've, we always say that like we want to play with two balls. And what I mean by that is play a little bit faster. So this group, so, you know, everyone's able to get their shots. Um, if you play at one ball, it slows the game a little bit. Um, you know, you have to be a lot more efficient. Um, so I thought we've, they've just done a great job of working with each other and they've both been extremely efficient on the floor. I mean, they're both Millie is shooting like around 42% from the field as a guard, which is great. And then Z is shooting an impressive right at about 50%. So when they're doing stuff like that, my job is to find ways to put it in their hands because we know that they're going to make at least one, 
one of the two shots that they put up. So, <laughs> well, coach, it's it is nice when when it's clicking, and and, and I like that. That's that's a, it has to be a good feeling for you. And you know, one of the thing too for for your team as well. And looking through the the roster, I think there's something. This is interesting. You have two players on your team whose name starts with Z, with Zaria, and then Zanice Crawford as well. I don't know if I've I've ever seen another roster where two players are on there whose name starts with Z. Doesn't mean anything toward basketball. Just an interesting point. Here's we're on the summit now and talking with Coach Derek Matthews, who uh, is the coach of a, an interesting team and a team that's doing well. By the way, I appreciate if you take the time. Please subscribe to the channel Midwest Sports Net. Coach, one other player I want to bring out whose name doesn't start with Z. How about Lainey Morrow coming off your bench for you? And she is a young player that's giving you pretty good time. 11 points per game, better than six rebounds over her last eight outings. So um, it's interesting, right? Because Laney is someone where, like I talked about, the struggles that we had a little bit earlier on. And it wasn't struggles. We just we just lost some games. It made me go back and say, OK, what adjustments do we need to make? And she was someone that always did well. Um, it's just unfortunately for her, she's playing behind an All-American. You got <laughs> Zaria Dorsey that's taking up quite a bit of minutes. Sometimes it's hard to say, where does Laney fit in? So. But Lainey has been someone, she works hard and she does literally everything that you can ask. She's a she's a really, really smart player. She has a high basketball IQ, and I think she had like a 32 ACT. So she's a smart kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, I said, all right, we got to play her more somehow. Just somehow. We know that what she's able to do, she's doing it on the court, um, but she was already doing it in practice. She just wasn't getting a lot of times in games. But she worked hard. Uh, we needed her for a game against uh, John Brown where we where we didn't have a Zaria Dorsey that game. And Lane just stepped up. In fact, she makes a huge three that puts us up five with, I think, like 20-something seconds left on the game, which was like the dagger that just probably propelled us to that win. Mm -hmm. And after that, it was like, that's it. That's it. We're scrapping this and this and this. We are going to get her in the game somehow. And And – since we've gotten her in the game, her rebounding has been great, which we already knew she could do. She's able to score it down, and she's just confident because you're playing with a Millie. You're playing with a Zaria. You're playing with, um, you know, uh, we got a, a guard that's made the most three-pointers in school history on our team. We have a point guard that has the most assists in school history that's on this team. All she has to do is not mess up. It's a pretty simple job. <laughs> <laughs> just do your job and just be yourself and don't do anything uncharacteristic and everything else will work its way off, work its way the way it's supposed to be. And that's what it's been doing. Coach, after that John Brown win, which was a five point victory, that you won four more since then. And it's not just been wins. I mean, they, they really have been blowouts, which as I mentioned, you know, if you if you're familiar with Student Athletic Conference, uh, folks who are familiar with the conference know this is a tough basketball league, men's basketball, women's basketball alike. And you all have averaged 37 point margin of victory over your last four games. And those are big wins. And that includes, by the way, a 30 plus point win at Oklahoma City University, which is, again, almost unheard of. So, uh, coach, obviously you, you found that connection and something seems to be going right. So um, I think during that stretch, we found out that our depth is really good. So um, during that stretch, I mean, we're subbing in five at a time. And um, not only are we subbing in five at a time, like they legitimately can play. My second unit could play with a lot of teams <laughs> and probably win. So we've tried to find ways to how do we get it? If you're looking at it as um, – you know, basketball is it's, it's just so long, right? So you have to find ways to, if you're without this person or this person, especially because of COVID, sickness, family, anything, how can you plug in a different piece there and still be okay? And that's what's kind of pushed us a little bit more of saying, okay, we got to play with our bench a little bit more. And it's really helped us because the starting group is coming back in and they're so fresh. Some mm -hmm. of these other players you know, during that stretch that you're talking about, you're talking about my starters are playing about 26 minutes and that's it. So like they're eager to like, coach, please put me back <laughs> in, please put me back in. And then my other group is like, why? We're, look how good we're doing, coach. So it's just like, you know, you're pulled both ways here and you're just like, you know what? 
All right. You guys are right. You, hey, green group, you keep doing your thing. White group, you keep doing your thing. And because yeah, that's how they're broken up in our in practice, obviously, with mm -hmm. our green uniforms and our white uniforms. So they've just been really excelling playing with each other like that. And I'm just as the coach, I'm just my job, too, is don't mess it up. So <laughs> I'm just trying to mess it up. <laughs> that's been I think that's been the theme of this conversation so far. Just don't mess it up. Well, coach, I hope you don't. I hope you don't. And again, continue winning ball games. Let me before we wrap too much of our time up, and I'm I'm very grateful for the visit. I have to point out one other victory. I talked about the OCU win. Another win on the road. You win at Plainview, Texas, at Wayland Baptist, number six team in the country at the time. Uh, that's another win that is just uh, a really big win, and I think a statement win for your program. Winning at Wayland does not happen often <laughs> no. if you're not the Flying Queens yourself. In fact, um, I remember they had put out an article. Um, the last conference team to do it was us last year. So, um, you know, it doesn't happen often. Then one other team had beat them this year. I think it was Concordia, Nebraska. So um, who's also a very good team. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't happen often. You really have to have the mindset to um, that's kind of instilled in not only just my staff, but like in my players of just believing that we can. Um, we have a very tough league and the RPI and the strength of schedule just kind of came out as well. And we have four teams in the top 25. So that shows how deep the sack is. So right now, I think the top three teams right now, you know, the, the top four teams, you're talking about one game apart if, if they're not tied. So anything right. can happen in this stretch. But I thought in that Wayland game, we just had the right mindset. We played behind. Um, we were just able to make plays where, you know, it wasn't because of a play call by me. We just we were able to rebound. They made plays for each other. We we're They made it hard for Wayland to guard them because of plays that they were making by themselves. And when you do that, it's, I mean, it's hard to lose when you do that. Yeah. And, I, and, you know, and what I always say is as long as our stars show up, like, so if our main group show up and then our role players and everyone else do what they're supposed to do, it's, it's hard for us to, to lose a game. And that's, and that's kind of what happened in that, uh, during that game. So. Well, Coach, to, to and even to speak to that, and I look at the numbers in front of me right now, current numbers in the Sooner Athletic Conference, top four teams separated by a game and a half. Okay. Wayland Baptist 12-2, and Mid-America Christian, Texas Wesleyan both at 11-2. and two. You all are 10-3. and three. And you have a chance to make up even a little bit of ground on that as, as you have some tough games coming up. So you look right. the rest of your schedule, it's, it's not easy. Again, the Sooner Athletic Conference, not easy then. This week, you have three three games in five days, though, starting on Thursday. Thursday, it's home to Southwestern Christian. Saturday is on the road at Mid-America Christian. And then Monday, it is a home game against Texas Wesleyan there. So three games in five nights, Those all those players should get some opportunity. <laughs> they'll, they'll get an opportunity, it looks like, to get out on the court. They're licking their chops saying, yes, he has to play <laughs> us more. So... Um, but yeah, tough stretch, but I've kn I'm known this since earlier on. So I'm really big with, if you look at our schedule earlier, we've always played back to back. Like we, we try to treat everything like almost like a tournament. Cause I look at it as if you make the national tournament, right? You need to be able to play on a Friday and immediately turn around and mm -hmm. be able to play on a Saturday with making quick adjustments. So I've tried to prep that into our team earlier on and I, and you know, I hope it continues to pay off, but so far it has. And I don't address – with my team, I try to look at it as, hey, the task at hand is SCU. That, that is the only task at hand. So we handle that, and then we'll focus on the next game, which is MACU. If, but if you look ahead, then you don't give the respect you're supposed to give to SCU, mm -hmm. and that's where scares happen. So we take it literally one game at a time, whether it was – you know, five games in six days. We're we're just <laughs> focusing on that first one. We'll get to that second one and the third one, but handle the task at hand first. So yeah. that's keep it small. 
<laughs> don't don't let it get too big coach i i appreciate that and I, I like the wisdom in that too i think i think that's fantastic well so far it's been doing well for you again 16 and 4 overall right now on the middle in the middle of a seven game winning streak and i know that you hope that continues and we're going to continue following you coach Derek matthews thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit the usao drovers are looking to make a push in the home stretch of the 21-22 season and and hopefully uh, get beyond the not only the Sooner Athletic Conference tournament but into the NAI National Tournament as well. Coach, thanks again for for being with us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for just having me. I, I greatly appreciate it. Wow.